Hi guys, so last week um, I started to do a bit of reading about Waterloo and I was waxing lyrical all about it um, over the weekend in The Weekender. And I decided I was going to try and reach out to Warlord to try and find out a, bit, a, bit, a little bit more about Waterloo. And lo and behold, to celebrate the 199th anniversary of the battle, it turns out these guys today are launching something quite special. So I'm joined by John Stallard and Paul Sawyer of Warlord fame. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. So I'm uh, reaching out to you guys to try and find out a little bit about Waterloo. And you guys are already leagues ahead. You have something very special launching today. Paul, can you tell us a bit about it? Well, one of the, one of the key um, elements of the battle was the fight for the farmhouse of Pegasus. Um, and much like we've done in previous years with uh, Pegasus Bridge and Rourke's Drift Sets, We've pulled together something rather special, a big box set full of Napoleonic loveliness containing the Palmer House at La Haison and loads of plastic and metal miniatures. Oh, fantastic. Can you take us, uh, can you take us through the, the, the content? So you have the farmhouse. Um, it's uh, laser cut HDF. Or what, what other components are, 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 uh, is it made of? Yeah, it's, it's um, laser cut wood. You've got the courthouse itself. Uh, the various buildings, uh, stables, farmhouse, walls, gatehouse, all the, all the areas that you'd expect to see from um, the classic paintings, the movie, and many, many books. Um, doors, gates open, there's an acetate sheet, so replicate the windows. Um, and we also have um, some wooden carts in there, which were either used within the courthouse itself, but we're using them to form part of the barricades that were set up. And what miniatures come in the set? John? Oh, um, well, it was, um, La Haye Sainte was uh, pivotal to Wellington's uh, left flank. And he stationed in there uh, the King's German Legion, uh, German troops under his command, all armed with rifles, uh, very deadly rifles, a bit like the equivalent of the 95th rifles in the Sharp series, you've seen them. And these guys defended the farmhouse pretty much all afternoon against fairly overwhelming odds, until they started to run out of rifle ammunition. Not a good plan. They were reinforced by some uh, other red-coated troops and some Nassau troops, also in green. Uh, uh, and we represent the King's German Legion in here, in their, their bottled green uniforms. And we've also got the French who are attacking. So about 6.30, Marshal Ney, famous Marshal Ney, led an attack with the, uh, some light infantry and an attached company of engineers, all armed with axes, pickaxes, mattocks, all manner of things, and, uh, and made a big assault on the gate. And it was these brave engineers that finally burst through into the courtyard, allowing the French light infantry to basically chase the Germans back to their, to their lines. It, was, it got pretty bloody at one stage. Yeah, so I've, I've we, heard of, of 400 groups. men that were in it. Uh, something like only 40 got out alive. Yeah, that was a, Von Bering was the leader there, a very tough boy. I think, I think he rallied a few more later on, came in, you know, one or two just hid in the farmhouse until the end of the battle. Mm -hmm. um, now, it, it can't be underestimated the importance of, of, the, of these buildings, La Haisant, um, because if, the, if Wellington hadn't stationed troops in them, there was every chance that, uh, that Napoleon, the French, could have just basically overrun them very early on in the battle and we'd be living in a very different Europe probably today. Well, very much so. The, you know, the two, well, certainly from the British perspective, the Allied perspective, La Haisant anchored the left wing and the other famous building was the uh, Hougamont, which is a much bigger building, and that was in the right centre of the British line and that was held by, again, by some... Um, uh, uh, Dutch troops and also by the guards, most famously. Mm -hmm. So um, that's uh, that's the the main kind of box set. But for uh, Rourke's Drift and for Pegasus Bridge, you did a uh, almighty collector's editions. Are you doing that again this time? Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, named Salt the Farmhouse. Um, it builds on the content of the, um, the battle set, the box set by adding in loads more uh, miniatures, uh, resin terrain, um, and, and it allows you to yeah, really replicate a lot more of the events of the day. Yeah. 
Now, that will include, there's the famous sand pit where the 95th Rifles were based, just down the road, just about 100 yards or so from La Aisant. It will have some 95th Rifles as well. Uh, a really cool Marshal Ney. It does, yeah. Um, a great mounted Marshal Ney figure. Um, some more German riflemen. Uh, and then another French line infantry unit. And even a Royal Horse Artillery Rocketeer launching uh, these giant rockets down the road at the French. It's very exciting. Oh, fantastic. And I'm just going to lean across and grab it. One of our favourite pieces. You probably can't see this, and we'll show you. Um... Uh huh. Here you go. It's a pile of dead Frenchmen. Oh. Not left out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh... Uh, well, um, John's best place to tell you the significance of this piece. Uh, the night before the battle, it was very rainy and uh, everyone was cold and wet. And soldiers being soldiers, the King's German Legion went to the barn to find wood, couldn't find enough wood, so they just broke down the barn doors to the outside, which led to the outside and burnt those, uh -huh. thinking, we won't be using those, needing those tomorrow. But of course, it led to a very dangerous gap in the defences. And so von Bering rather brutally but effectively just collected 22 French dead and formed them into a barricade across the gates. Oh. Ouch. That, uh, that's bloody stuff, all right. Well, you can see why the French were a bit cross by the time they got in at 6.30. Yes, yes, you can. Um, in terms of, um, of Napoleonics, um, there'll be a lot of viewers that, that have maybe never, never actually played um, uh, a Napoleonics game or Waterloo uh, specifically. Now, one of the fascinating things for me, uh, John, was the, there was very specific tactics that were used at the time you know, and very different tactics between the French and the British. You know, the British in, it, it would have had this kind of like long gun line, whereas the French fought in columns. A another one that really fascinated me was that during a cavalry charge by the French, the, the British formed into like these fighting squares. For anybody that's playing a Napoleonic's game, uh, do these formations and things like that come into play? Uh, you know, because they sound absolutely fascinating to me, and I'd love to see if they're, they're actually utilised or, or have a purpose on the tabletop. Well, there are two purposes on the tabletop. Yes, you, you definitely do form any infantry threatened by cavalry, of any nation, in fact, would be very wise to form square. Uh, it, it basically means you haven't got a flank, of course, but cavalry can't get on your flank and just cut you down. They're always presented with a wall of bayonets. And it also looks fantastic on the tabletop to form your line suddenly into a square. It looks great. And um, in terms of the, 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 the tactical options, uh, one uh, you, you were telling me just before we came on air um, that I found fascinating was that uh, even the square itself is a double-edged sword. So while, while it'll protect you from the cavalry, that doesn't necessarily mean you're safe. No, it doesn't. It makes you, unfortunately, a horribly attractive target for artillery fire from any accompanying horse artillery or howitzer of fire or even skirmishes coming up. You, know, you can't miss a mass of 600 men. Or... So one of, the, one of the key things, sorry, we dropped you there a little bit. So one of the key tactics then is it, if you have your cavalry, you want to keep your, um, your horse-mounted artillery relatively nearby as well. So force the guys into squares and then just pound away at them. Um, perhaps one of the greatest mistakes that occurred at Waterloo was the massed French cavalry charges on the ridge line. Uh, the British were all behind the ridge, formed deeply in squares, and the French cavalry, up to 14,000 of them, surged forward to try and overwhelm the British line. Um, as it was, the British and the Brunswickers, our allies, stayed in square. They were quite sa relatively safe from the French cavalry. Had the French brought up horse artillery to accompany them, then I'm sure they would have blown the British squares away and on to Brussels and the, you know, a different end of the Napoleonic Wars. I've got to ask, you are two gentlemen that have probably played Waterloo many, many times over your gaming lives. Um, uh, of all the times you've played it, how many times has Napoleon actually won? <laughs> well, in, <laughs> well it, it's tricky playing Waterloo because... Um, because Napoleon knows the Prussians are going to come in at the last minute and win the battle for the Allies. Yeah. But of course, on the day, he wasn't sure that was going to happen. So if you recreate it on the tabletop, what happens is Napoleon 
knows bloody well how long he's got before the Prussians come in. <laughs> so he does something different every time. In general, I find the French win. Yeah. OK, guys, look, uh, thank you very much for that. Now, we're running a competition. So uh, to be in with a chance of winning this competition, all you have to do is comment on this video here on Beast of War or here on YouTube or on the little Facebook post that we've put up about this uh, to spread the news about, uh, about Waterloo. And uh, Paul, what are we giving away? Wow, well, we're giving away three things. We're giving away a copy of the Black Powder Rules. Great. Uh, we're giving away uh, our recently released British Starter Army crammed full of British plastics. And we're also giving away um, a new French Starter Army. Both of those will be fantastic additions to anybody's existing Napoleonic Army or a brilliant way to start one. Okay, fantastic, guys. John. Paul, look, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me this morning. I find it absolutely fascinating. I'm going to have to make a trip over there to try and get a game of Waterloo in uh, um, because I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm pretty hooked. Guys, look, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you fancy having a look at the, the new Le Haisant set from Warlord, head on over to their website now. It's up and ready to go. Um, otherwise, make sure you comment and enter that competition because you could find yourself uh, with a lovely starter set or a lovely addition to the Le Le Hans Sant set. Um, once again, thanks for watching. Thanks to our guests. And we'll You're see welcome. you again soon. Here we are. See ya.